Um, a very interesting topic that every church in America and the world really should be thinking about. The largest group, the largest age group in our nation of America is millennials. Those born between 1980 and 2000. So if one was born in 2000, they'd be 17 today, they'd be a young millennial. There's 78 million of them. They are larger than boomers, larger than Generation X. They are the largest people group in America and they are not very religious, not very spiritual at all. If you have a son or a grandchild uh, that's that age, you might be able to relate to this a little bit. Not that every one of them is not spiritual, but for the most part, as a group, they are non-religious. Uh, they are people that don't like to be called millennials. They don't like to be labeled. Um, and here's the key point. They don't have any spiritual presuppositions. In other words, they don't have any basic spiritual truth to build upon. They don't believe in God. They don't believe in the Bible. They don't believe in Jesus. So where do you start? I talked to a pastor of mine in at Kroger's. I ran to the Kroger's. He said, well, good luck. I don't have a clue who they are. And I think that's the problem. Most churches don't know how to reach them, where they are, who they are, because they are so diverse. So the question is, if they don't have any spiritual presuppositions, where do you start? Well, I suggest we start with the basics of life. Basic things we agree upon, like, like truth, breath, creation. So today let's talk about, does God exist? Now, all of us in this room today would probably say, well, that's kind of dumb. We all know God exists. No. They don't know God exists. For the most part, they don't believe God exists. Now, if you don't believe God exists, then you have a real strange, or I, I won't say strange, different point of view than most of us. Everyone today in our church would say, well, yeah, we know God exists. But you know what? Not everybody does. And so we can't assume that everybody starts where we start. Ken Ham says, in Answers in Genesis, we're doing on Sunday afternoon at Blankship's house, he says, you've got two places to start. Either man's word or God's word. Mm -hmm. Now, there's a problem with that because man is imperfect. So we're going to start with the imperfect word or a perfect word, which is God. So I'm going to start with God's word. But they don't believe God's word. So what do you do? Well, in 1859, Charles Darwin uh, wrote... The, the article on Origin of the Species. Origin of Species. His theory, his theory set forth natural selection, which led to evolution. Okay? Now, prior to 1859, the dominant thought was that God created everything. I want you to get this today. Prior to 1859, the belief as a whole was across the world that God created everything. And God said, and God said, and then again, God. Genesis 1 1. God created everything. But when Charles Darwin began his theory of evolution, the mindset changed. And they started intersecting and changing from God to science to man to evolution. Now, there are two starting points I said today earlier man's word and God's word. Now, Remember, biblically, science means knowledge. See, all of a sudden, in our, our current world, if you talk about science, that means you can't totally eliminate anything about the Bible, or anything about spirituality, anything about God. That's not true. Because biblically, science is knowledge. So to have knowledge is the obtaining of science. Okay? And the Bible says the, the beginning of wisdom is fearing the Lord. So we have to understand just because so there's a scientific community, that doesn't mean it contradicts what the Word of God says. So I'm starting the Word of God, planning on the Word of God, building on the Word of God. That's how we reach out to young people we call millennials. Now, God is outside of time. God is outside of time. Now, why is that? Because God has no beginning. He has no end. God has no creator because He's God. If something or something created God, or someone created God, He's not God. So God is outside of time. God needs nothing to exist. 
is God. In Psalms 90 verse 2 it says, God is outside of time. Here's what it says. Before the mountains were born, before you gave birth to the earth and to the world, from beginning to end you are God. So before there was anything, there was God. Now Genesis 1-1, we start there. In God's Word, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now, that is written in the Hebrew language. If you look at that verse, what it says in the literal text is this, before there was anything, God. God existed before creation. God existed in eternity past because there is no time with God. God's outside of time. And so God is the one that began creation, created everything, I believe. I believe Genesis chapter 1 through 11, like they are. I believe exactly what the Bible says. And I believe if you understand creation, everything that man says that man did is not true, but it is true with God. God did it all. For example, if you believe that a microscopic organism out in the universe somewhere exploded, and after millions and millions and millions, maybe even billions of years, we got what we are. It takes more faith to believe that than that God made Adam. Amen. I did not walk out of some swamp as an amphibian. Right. I did not crawl out of my belly as an alligator and become a man. I'll talk more about that in a minute. Some of y'all are surprised <laughs> that I didn't begin as an alligator. I didn't. I really didn't. Now, in the beginning, God, of course, in God, made the heavens and the earth. Okay? Now, that's my starting point. So, if God's my starting point, I can build my foundation on spiritual truth. But, for that to be someone's starting point, they've got to believe in God. So, you've got a lot of your friends that may not believe in God. So, let me give you some examples. Here you see a watch in sand on the beach. And Mount Rushmore. By the way, that's Washington. That's Lincoln. Who's that second guy there? Jefferson. Jefferson. Who's that third guy? Roosevelt. Hey, Roosevelt. Hey, Roosevelt. Very good. You get A, Zach. Okay. <laughs> so, you see a 747 FedEx plane. Y'all heard about FedEx and bought out UPS, right? What? Yeah, FedEx bought, bought out UPS. They don't call it Fed Up. <laughs> <laughs> you can laugh at church, don't kidding, you can laugh at sin. Now, God is I'm a sin. God knows all things. God knows everything. Now you gotta you gotta begin there. God knows everything. He knows me, knows you, knows everything. He knows what we're gonna do before we do it. He knows everything. Now, you got an evidence of creation that God exists, evidence of intelligence. It is a design. Now, you know if you walk along that beach, you're down there in Tampa, Florida, you're walking along and you're strolling along and you're thanking God because your house hadn't been blown away like one of us. And you come across a Seiko watch. A Seiko watch like this one. And you pick it up and it's... Oh. You don't drop it, but you pick it up and it's running. Now, the atheist would say, well, that watch just got there. He just showed up. He showed up in history. Are you trying to tell me this Seiko watch with dual time and date and calendar and a forts or actually it's automatic line, that just happened? Or do you think of some designer behind this watch that made it and somehow got to the beach? Well, I think even common sense would say to you, it's a designer. How about Mount Rushmore? Do you think those, those stones, they've been, let's say they were there a billion years and all of a sudden it turned out that way. That artistic design, the nose, the ears, the eyes, the lightness, look. In other words, the wind just sometimes supernaturally blew that sandstone away and carved those things out. You wouldn't believe that. It means a designer, okay? How about that airplane? Have you ever got on an airplane and thought about how that thing worked? How in the world does a several ton aircraft get up in the air and fly? Metal, okay? And then you think, well, you know, what if something happened? What if it was the rapture and the pilot was taken? Of course, I'm going too, so, so Carter, it's not what happened today. It's okay. <laughs> I mean, I to what I'm saying is, those things just don't happen. You know that each of those situations 
there's a design behind that, a designer behind both Mount Rushmore and the Washington plant. But now I want you to look at something funny. I want you to find the monkey. <laughs> yeah, if you'll find the monkey among the dogs. <clears throat> Go ahead. Find the monkey among the dogs. You got that little shih tzu there. You got, I don't know what that is. That looks like kind of a boxer. It's a chow there. Uh, there's Ren Tin Tin, it's a German Shepherd. There's a Labrador. There's a Beagle. Where's the monkey at? Everybody see the monkey? How many don't see a monkey? Raise your hand. If you don't see the monkey. How many aren't sure? How many are scared? <laughs> There is no monkey bear because there are different kinds of same species. There are different kinds. Coyote, wolf, they're all the same species. You don't change the information inside the DNA. You don't have species jump orders. If that was, if evolution was true, you'd have had monkey, 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 man, 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 man. We wouldn't have monkeys anymore. And we still have monkeys, don't we? Mm -hmm. Look around you. <laughs> Can be one sitting next to you. What I'm saying is, there's all kinds of dogs, there's still a dog. You don't find a monkey there because the monkey's not in the kind the dogs are. Everybody got that? So we see the design of God is both uh, uh, physical and eternal. We also see that, that God places in the DNA of, of created beings information. That information determines what you are. When you go have an ultrasound, for example, uh, we got to see the ultrasound of our, our newest grandchild be born uh, in November. It's going to be a little boy named Leonardo Shane. No. Leonardo. What's the middle name? Remember? Oh, well. Anyway, Leonardo Shane. No. Is it Shane? No. Sean? No. Anyway, Leonardo Shaw. This is going to be. Go find Leo. Uh, middle name to be given later on, okay? But we saw that baby in there. You know how that is. You have that ultrasound. You see that baby and everything. And that's just a miracle, okay? And so God has placed in every human being DNA. But DNA has the information stores that makes you a homo sapien. Don't panic. Nothing wrong with that. Homo sapien means you're a human being, okay? Human being, all right? And so here we will look at this for a minute. 